Hello, sweet summer children. I'm back with some juice to get you through the long night. So today I have my friend Talking Thrones here with me today, and we are going to be discussing Sansa Stark. Absolutely. Thank you, Gray Area, for having me on your channel. I really appreciate that. And I want to thank everybody who is listening. And I am very excited to discuss and give our predictions for Sansa Stark. All right. So when we left off with Sansa Stark, she had executed Littlefinger and she seemed to be on good terms with her family. So do you think that Sansa is going to be pro Stark coming up in season eight? Or do you think Daenerys might complicate that? I think both at first. I think Sansa will be pro Stark based off of the last scene that we saw with her and Arya Stark when they were on top of Winterfell overlooking the battlements and stuff like that. She seemed to really accept the pretty much the quote that their father had said, the lone wolf dies, but the pack survives. Sansa really started to uh, see that for what it was and realize that they were better working together than by themselves. So I do think Sansa will be pro Stark at the beginning, but when John shows up with Daenerys, I do think that's going to cause a little bit of complications and some tension because we know that Sansa had a problem with John going south to greet with her in the first place because of what the Targaryens had done to their family members in the past. So when John shows up with this Targaryen queen, who he is not only in a relationship with now, but also said he pretty much bent the knee to her on the ship, I think that could cause some problems. Yeah, I think it could cause some problems too because Sansa is not going to be happy that they fought for Winterfell back together. And she ultimately feels like that Jon wouldn't have won if she didn't bring the veil, the people from the veil. So she feels like she is responsible for them reclaiming Winterfell. And not only that, even though John is king in the North, she feels like she's the lady of Winterfell. Yeah, I agree with that because we did see what Sansa said to Arya. You should be on your knees thanking me for getting Winterfell back. John didn't win the Battle of the Bastards. He wasn't able to basically win that entire battle until I showed up with the veil that I got. See, things that she says like that really just makes me not like her. Like, why would she say that Ari should be thanking her? I'm not even gonna get off on into a tangent about that, but yeah, she feels entitled and she feels entitled to Winterfell. She's always wanted to be queen. It's all she's ever wanted. She is a Tully at, at her core. At her core, she's not a Stark, she is a Tully. And the Tully words are family, duty, honor, but Lysa Tully was also a Tully. And I think that uh, Sansa is going to be more like her aunt Lysa than her mother, even though her mother was a horrible person. <laughs> 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 Moving forward, though, like what what is her role? I think she will probably stay in a similar position for the most part. I think she will remain as the Lady of Winterfell. But eventually, when Jon shows up with all the reinforcements and their army and stuff like that, they're not really going to have time to worry about who is taking control of Winterfell because, as we all know, the Night King is coming and all of that stuff is going to have to be put on the back burner until they deal with that threat first. Yeah, I, I think that her role will be the same, but I kind of think that Sansa might not stay in Winterfell. Do you think that she has potential to become Lady of the Dreadfort because she is heir to the Dreadfort? She was Ramsay Bolton's wife. That marriage was consummated and she's technically a Bolton and the Boltons are all extinguished. So the Dreadfort should go to her. Yeah, that's a very good point. You are absolutely right about that. But I'm wondering what Northern castles will get destroyed by the Night King before he reaches Winterfell, assuming that's one of the places he goes to. I have a feeling Carhold and the Dreadford and places like that could get completely destroyed. But with you saying Sansa could possibly leave Winterfell, I think that is possible because of the problems that could arise from Jon showing up with this Targaryen and Jon betting and most likely wedding 
this Targaryen when he finds out she's pregnant, which we both agree that she is. And John being a Targaryen himself, when all this comes out, we both agree that there's going to be some problems with Sansa having to accept all this. And I think if she would happen to leave Winterfell at some point, it would be because of all of that. So if you think the Dreadfort would be destroyed, do you think she could go to the Vale? Yeah, I think that would probably be the next best place because she is familiar with that place and her cousin is still there. And uh, Jon Royce is in Winterfell now with the Vale. And something that we've talked about before is if someone is going to pretty much revolt against Jon for all of the Targaryen stuff that we've discussed, Jon Royce would probably be the one who would abandon Jon first. And I think you said this before, if he did leave with the Vale forces, he could possibly offer to take Sansa with him back to the Vale because we have seen Jon Royce and Sansa already kind of have a discussion with each other about who should actually be in power in the North after Jon had left. And Jan Royce has been very vocal about not wanting to subject himself to a Targaryen rule and um, Sansa has as well. So they would be on equal footing there. And then also there was rumors <laughs> that Sansa was to be betrothed to Sweet Robin. Mm -hmm. That was that was Lysa's plan. And we know in the books, she's supposed to be being set up to marry the heir of the Vale. Yeah. Um, Harry the heir. So I could see her potentially like doing a Lysa Tully. Because I've said before, like history kind of repeats itself. Um, I could see her like pulling a Lysa Tully move, disagreeing with John, not to the point where she would raise swords against him, but she would retreat to the Vale with Jan Royce and the Vale army and stay in the Vale until the Night King is defeated. And maybe then pick a side between John and Cersei. That would be so heartbreaking if it actually came to that. I think there is a possibility, you know, we've already said so much in this video about it. If someone in Winterfell is going to have a problem, it would be Sansa and Jon Royce in the Vale. I just hope it doesn't come to that. Based off of, you know, how season seven ended with Sansa and Arya making up, I hope Sansa can eventually look past all of this and realize that she needs them when she finally sees this threat from the north for herself which john has warned her about she's going to realize i need john whether he's a targaryen or not whether he's my bastard brother or not i need him i need daenerys we need her dragons we need her dothraki and unsullied without all of this winterfell will not stand and all of us will die. Yeah, I would actually be heartbroken if, like, Sansa's not my favorite, but I would be heartbroken if she did that. Like, if she left her family because of because of John and Daenerys. I just don't see her being okay with it. And I see her, like, she doesn't trust people, like, suspicious of people, and she doesn't trust people. And she's a slow learner, <laughs> as she said herself. <laughs> Littlefinger planted that seed in her in her mind in season six who should rule the north the natural born daughter of ned and catelyn stark or a bastard born in dorn that seed is in her mind whether she knows it or not that seed has been planted and when Arya was playing the game of faces with her Arya knows that sansa wants to rule winterfell she knows that the whole, like, I know a lot of people were confused with what was going on between Arya and Sansa last season, but there is a deleted scene where Sansa asked Bran for help. So Bran kind of, I'm guessing, showed Sansa, like, the past and what Littlefinger was up to all this time. And I guess reconciled Sansa and Arya before Littlefinger's execution. Like, do you think that Bran will be able to reconcile Sansa and Jon if they are in the outs? Yeah, I think he could definitely help in that aspect. I think Bran can help convince Sansa of the threat and how real it is. I think he could talk to Sansa and basically tell her everything that Jon has been saying is the truth. These other things that you're worrying about, being a lady, being the queen in the north, being the lady of Winterfell and all that stuff doesn't really matter in the end because Jon has seen it. What he is telling us is the truth and if Sansa doesn't get on board soon you know it, it, it's it won't end good for her I don't think 
Okay, so if the North revolts, like it's gonna take more for them to revolt than just John showing up with Daenerys. I feel like they would need someone to stand behind. And I feel like that person could be Sansa. Like, who do you see standing beside Sansa if the North, if there's a Northern revolt? The Vale, we know. But do you think like um, some other Northern houses have the potential to stand beside Sansa? Yeah, I think maybe Glover, Lord Glover. I think he was standing next to Jon Royce when they were voicing their opinions about Jon going down to the south to greet with this Targaryen. I think he could maybe be another one that would stand with the Vale and with Sansa as who actually should be ruling the north. Other than mm -hmm. that, I'm not exactly sure how many houses are still in the plot at this point other than yeah. the Mormonts and uh, the Manderleys should be in play a little bit because we are going to see White Harbor most likely. And I guess, uh, I don't know if the Umbers or Karstarks would, because we know how yeah. <laughs> we know how Sansa was willing to treat their kids based on their parents. Yeah. Right, uh, and they'll probably um, be Night King food. And yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. I, I think the Karstark and Umbers will most likely get wiped out before the Night King gets there. So I think, based off what we saw in Season 7, it was pretty much the veil in the Glovers that we saw actually standing up and voicing that opinion. Yeah, that's that's basically all I can think of, like, you know, right now. But this is gonna be a harder question. Will Bran and Arya support Sansa or Jon, like if they're faced with that choice? That's a good question. Um, I think they would support Jon. Based on what Bran knows, I think he would want to support John because he knows he needs John. He knows how special John actually is. I mean, just based on what Blood Raven showed Bran in the visions, he could have showed him anything, but he specifically showed him John being born. So we know John's extremely important in terms of the end game. And Definitely. I think Bran Bran knows that. So he's gonna wanna he he loves his sister, so you know, he's not gonna completely shun her unless she would do something drastically crazy but for this war that's coming up that they need to think about and deal with first Bran is going to be like I gotta stay with Jon right now I gotta help him through this and we need to help each other to beat the Night King then I can worry about what Sansa's is talking about and with Arya we know how that relationship is we know how yeah. Sansa and Arya think of each other and we know how Arya and Jon think of each other they love each other to their core. And I think Arya will be by John's side no matter what. I absolutely 100% agree. Arya is not turning on John. No way. So, so let's look at this from another standpoint. And this standpoint is that Sansa actually stays true to John and she doesn't have any beef with John and Daenerys. What could Sansa do to help during the long night? Because I was thinking about it, like, what can she do to advance the story? Like, is she just going to sit there and be Lady of Winterfell? Is she going to be a soldier? Is she going to pick up a sword? Is she going to learn archery? Like, what is she going to do? So I feel like um, a valuable thing she could do is cement an alliance for John. And the way she can do that is with a marriage. In terms of that part of the question, I do think... Sansa could get married again. I think little sweet Robin is always a possibility still. He technically is Lord of the Vale and he technically should be Warden of the East. So that is always one that is still kind of in that back pocket if they need it. And I think Gendry could be one, even though he really doesn't have anything to provide at this point other than what he can do himself. But he is a Baratheon and there mm -hmm. would be a lot of people willing to come to his cause if they knew that there was a Baratheon still alive out there somewhere. And I think Tyrion is also another option, even though we know the relationship with the Lannisters and stuff like that. There's a lot of bad blood there. And we know Sansa and Tyrion was already married once. And at least in the books, we're inside Sansa's head a lot. And we know that she really doesn't like Tyrion in terms of husband and wife, but she knows he's a kind man and stuff like that. So I think that that door could still be open a little bit if they really wanted to uh, end all this fighting in the end. Because I think, and you know, don't quote me on this, but the story's based off of the War of the Roses, the Yorks, and the Lancasters. And I think 
the way that they finally ended all that bloodshed after all those years was they did a marriage alliance with the Yorks and the Lannisters. And in our story, that's the Lannisters and the Starks. So mm -hmm. when all this is said and done, we could possibly see something like that to where both sides finally put down their swords, assuming if Cersei would be dead at this point, and they could bring those two houses together with Sansa and Tyrion getting back together and ending that at least for a while. Yeah, and Sansa is the spitting not the spitting image, but she has a lot of similarities with Elizabeth of York. And I always say that if Sansa doesn't die, Sansa will be the queen of the Seven Kingdoms. If if she doesn't die, but I'm, I think she's going to die. Sorry if you like Sansa. <laughs> I, think she, I think she's going to die. Um, I feel like... Uh, I feel like I don't know how she made it this far, <laughs> but um, her, her story is kind of like, um, I feel like there wouldn't be a sadder death in Game of Thrones than Sansa dying because she has been through a lot. It, her death to me would be sad. With that said, there will be some marriage alliance that involves Sansa. And I don't know if she's gonna be happy about it i don't i feel like john won't make her marry anybody like she'll have the choice but i still feel like she'll be forced she'll still feel like she's forced to do it because if she doesn't do it then she's letting down her family mm -hmm. so and i and i feel like there are a lot of potential marriages for sansa um we have the popular san san theory which is sandor and sansa but I don't see politically where that would be a good marriage. Yeah, there wouldn't be a whole lot of gain there. Right. So, like, looking from politics, I feel like Sweet Robin is at the top of the list of who she should marry. Because that brings the veil even further into the fold. And then you have um, one that probably not many people are going to like, but Jamie, Jamie Lannister. Jamie is the heir to Castle Rock and the commander of the Lannister soldiers. And Jamie is also on the record of as saying that Sansa is his last chance at redemption. Of course, when he says it, he's talking about finding Sansa, but... I really think there is potential between Jamie and Sansa. And if not Jamie, then Tyrion. But I feel like it's gonna be a Lannister. And like like you said, the War of the Roses, the Lancasters and the Yorks are definitely the Lannisters and the Starks. Yeah, I never actually really considered Jamie, but that would also tie those two families together just as well as Tyrion would. But in terms of who would she rather marry as a person, the inside of that person, not the outside, it would probably be a better match for Tyrion. But in terms of who she could at least be attracted to, it would be Jamie, of course. Yeah. But I think I actually think Jamie's going to die in the end. But I never considered that option of Sansa marrying him, and I, that's that's an interesting idea, I should say. I think it could be how Ned and John Aaron married Catelyn and Lysa together in a single ceremony before a big war. Mm -hmm. I feel like it, it could be something like that. Sansa and Arya have to marry Jamie and Gendry or something like that to cement these alliances. Because like Daenerys is concerned, other people are going to concerned be concerned with, well, what happens after we defeat the Night King? People are going to be concerned with that kind of stuff. Yeah, because once all the fighting's done, you're going to have a lot of people wanting to claim their own piece of the pie again. I definitely think that's possible. And I kind of hope we do see one of them get in some kind of relationship in the end, because we do need a Stark heir, even if it doesn't get the last name Stark, I would just like at least my own opinion, something I would like to see if there's <laughs> going to be one glimmer of hope at the end of this thing, I would like to see a Stark heir, even if it doesn't have yeah, the Stark name. Me too. Me too. Because I, I need that name. I need that bloodline to carry on. How do you think Sansa will react to being forced to marry anyone? Or do you think that, do you think John would force her? No, I don't think so. And you kind of mentioned this a little bit earlier. 
I think if it does come to that and uh, Sansa will get married, I kind of agree with what you said earlier. She may not want to do it, but she will do it out of duty. But if somebody did try to force her to get married, she would not like that at all. She's already been through that twice with two forced marriages, and I don't think she would like that to happen a third time. But if she did, I think she would want it to be her decision to do it. Even if she didn't necessarily love that man and want to be with that man, at least she could know that she is doing it for herself and for the betterment of the North and possibly even beyond. I think what she's been through over all these years, if she had to marry somebody out of duty, basically, I should say, Tyrion would be a better match than some of the other people that are already out there. And based on how Ramsay treated her, Tyrion treated her like a princess, especially yeah. during the time when their families were at war with each other. And there was a lot of bloodshed being spilled right after the Red Wedding. You know what I mean? All this happened. And Tyrion, who should have been her enemy and should have not really cared about Sansa's feelings and all that kind of stuff, but he did anyway because he's not a piece of shit, you know what I mean? And Sansa yeah. saw through his looks and saw that, even though she still wanted nothing to do with him because she was grieving over all the atrocities that were done to her family. But deep down, she knows that Tyrion is a good guy, even though his name is Lannister. Yeah, he is. And and she said that much to John in season seven, which I think this, you know, Tyrion is probably most likely. But I always see those other possibilities there. And I'm always trying to look at like what we don't see, but we should see. <laughs> so I, I'm not sure who she would marry, but I think she's going to marry someone. And I think it's going to be a Lannister. Um, do you think she survives this do you think she survives season eight that's a very good question <laughs> um this is one that i struggle with because i feel like the show has become is not what it started out as and main characters being killed off the show has lessened to a certain degree and i'm wondering if they will continue to kill off some of these main characters that have been with us since day one in the books, I feel like she will die. But in the show, I really don't know. I could see her dying, depending on how this war goes. If, let's say, Winterfell would be completely overran with whites and everybody was left defending themselves, Sansa would be screwed because she has she's never picked up a sword. She has no idea how to fight. And if she got backed into a corner, she would be killed. Even though she has Arya there, she would have Jon there and Brienne and all that. They would be busy fighting, so they couldn't yeah. hold her. They wouldn't be able to hold her hand through this battle if it got so bad that whites were just coming up over the walls. In that, in that sense, I think she would be killed. But ultimately, with the way it seems like the show's going, I, I really don't know. I think it's fifty-fifty with whether she lives or dies. Yeah. Uh, so I am ninety percent sure that she dies <laughs> <laughs> how do you think she dies um i actually think it will be the saddest death ever on television it will um it's gonna play out from a standpoint of sansa dying in the place of Arya. lady died in the place of nymeria they're dire wolves so Sansa doesn't have her direwolf anymore. It, it died in the Riverlands and Nymeria ran away and lived her life on her own, which is what kind of happened to Sansa and Arya. Arya went to King's Landing and wound up running out, ending up all through the Riverlands and in Bravos, while Sansa had to almost forget her stark side and be in king's landing with lannisters like she couldn't she had to call her brother a traitor and and um basically take whippings and stuff from joffrey because she was considered a, a traitor's daughter and mm -hmm. she she you know she had to like let the stark in her die per se but 
her and then and like they ha they all have these parallels with their dire wolves. Um, if you look at Bran, Bran Mira tells Bran that he died in the cave. Summer, his dire wolf, died in the cave. Bran says that he's not Bran anymore. He's he remembers what it was like to be Bran, but he's not Bran. And I feel like that is why Sansa has to die. Like she has to die. That's not like the only reason. There's plenty of for things that have been foreshadowed, but if you look at the, the dire wolves themselves, Sansa has been fated to die. She's gonna probably save Arya, maybe from an ice spear getting thrown. And Sansa pushes Arya out of the way and takes it right through the chest. I feel like it's gonna be really sad, but wow. I, I definitely feel like she's gonna go out protecting her little sister. Yeah, and I like the fact that she brought up the dire wolves because I did recently make a video about Sansa Stark's death. And because I do think she is going to die, I just have trouble translating a lot of the evidence that I used to the show. But you bring up the dire wolves is a very good point about Lady dying. And that was actually something that I mentioned in that video. And I think that does represent the Starks' fate of what happens to their dire wolves. And Definitely. I could easily see her dying just as easily as I could see her living. But, you know, I like that you also said she could die by a ice spear or just getting killed by the others in general, because I feel like if she's going to die, it's going to be it's going to go down in that kind of way. If, you know, the battle gets very intense, Sansa, she she can't protect herself. She has no idea how to fight and that could hurt her in the end. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. And I've I, I've really I like people get confused because they're like, Sansa, you totally hate Sansa, da 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 da. But no, it's it's not that I hate her because her character has actually grown on me. It's it it's what it is. Like that's just what I feel is gonna happen. Just, it doesn't mean I'm right. I could be totally wrong. This is just what I feel. And I don't want Sansa to die. I don't want any more Starks to die. Yeah, and there's no problem with that. I mean, if if that's the way you think things will go out, it doesn't mean that's what you want to happen. It's just the way you see it. And, you know, people have to accept that. If you love Sansa, that's completely fine. I don't hate her, but if I feel like she can die, then that's just how I feel. It doesn't mean yeah. that's what I want. Right. Totally. Totally. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So for me, for me, I don't, I don't think she'll live... But on the off chance that she does survive, John will leave and leave Sansa the kingdom. Yeah, I completely agree with that. She would continue her role as not only Lady of Winterfell, but she would be Queen of the North. And, and I think John would be more than happy to let her have that position. A hundred percent. He's, he's going to be so tired of ruling kingdoms or and fighting. Do you think um, uh, Sansa could possibly ask Bran like weirwood questions about Daenerys or that like Arya could play the game of faces with Daenerys like per Sansa's request? Yeah, I do think that's very possible because in season seven, we know that Bran was one of the main reasons why Sansa ultimately decided to kill Littlefinger because she knows that her little brother has access to pretty much the truth about any and everything that's ever happened and presently happening. And if John shows up with this Targaryen, she could possibly go to her brother and say, you know, should I trust her? What type of person is she? What has she done in the past? She's saying she's this, this, and this, and her intentions are this, but based off of what her family has done to my family in the past, I don't trust her. I don't like her being around. Bran, you can tap into this and see what kind of person she is and the type of things that she has done. Can you give me any insight on who Daenerys actually is without me having to hear it from her mouth. You can actually see what really happened. Yeah. I, I kind of see something going on like that too. One question I want to ask you <laughs> is we saw that Ramsey Bolton. So a lot, of, a lot of people, including myself, I don't understand why Sansa had to be pulled into cementing the Stark Alliance with Ramsey, or cementing the, the Stark, the Bolton 
ownership of Winterfell. Like, I, I don't know why Sansa had to go through all that stuff that she went through. But now that we know that there, there always needs to be a Stark in Winterfell and Sansa is a Stark and she was used before to show the Northern Lords that Eddard, this is Eddard Stark's daughter. She's marrying Ramsay Bolton. The North is ours. So we've seen her being used like that before. Do you think that now that it's will be revealed that John is not her brother and John is a Targaryen, that the Northern Lords will request that he marry Sansa because she's Eddard's daughter? Huh. That's a good question. Um, yeah, I guess that would be a possibility. Um, yeah, I, yeah, I mean, I, I think that's possible, but I don't know if that would happen based off of what we talked about earlier with Daenerys being pregnant with Jon's child. He will not want that baby to grow up as a bastard, so unless he just legitimizes the baby himself that would mean he would have to marry Daenerys before she would have that kid and in that sense if that happened then obviously he wouldn't be able to marry Sansa but I do think they could approach them and you know say something like that could you imagine Sansa getting married to Jon and then Jon going south with Daenerys and everyone Sansa staying in Winterfell the fighting lasts a long time. And John comes back to Winterfell with a baby. Daenerys is dead, but John has his baby. And and Sansa treats the freaking baby like Catelyn Stark treated John. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> like I couldn't even. That's uh, totally like that's totally like a rabbit hole, but I just yeah. like Yeah, oh, I'd be so angry. So much. She's so much like her mom. Yeah, she definitely is. And huh, I could see her doing something like that, too. And I would be extremely disappointed and very mad at her. <laughs> so we pretty much covered everything on Sansa's fate and future. She may live. She may die. If she lives, she'll be queen of the Seven Kingdoms. We've been doing collabs like this for a while now. They're all linked on one playlist. We di just did Jon Snow on Dan's channel, and I'll link that at the bottom so you can go and check that out. Um, thanks for coming on, Dan. I appreciate it. These talks are always the bomb. Absolutely. I always enjoy coming on your channel, Gray, and I always appreciate you having me on. These discussions are always fun. I like seeing what you have to say about the characters that I'm always thinking about. It's fun to get a different perspective on these things that I'm always thinking about because I know when we have these discussions together, you always pull the best out of me and help me not only see things that I didn't think of, but conjure up new ideas that I haven't had before. So I really enjoy doing this all the time and I want to thank everybody for watching and I hope to see you guys again soon. Thanks, Gray. As always, thanks for watching. Thanks to everyone that supports me on Patreon. Please give this video a thumbs up if you like it. Please click that subscribe button and hit that notification bell and join the Sweet Summer family. Okay, my sweet summer children, have a good day.